For a long time, women in Europe had little to no rights at all. However, during the late 19th century, women's rights began to be recognized, New Zealand being the first country in 1893 to grant women's suffrage. Switzerland, however, was one of the last. This is Women's Rights in Switzerland. 1918 marked the beginning of the fight for women's suffrage. The general strike had social democrats demanding for a change to allow a woman's right to vote. Despite the persistence, the government struck down the demands by military force. This was no loss, however. It was the beginning of a crucial discussion. In 1959, the cantons of Vaud and Neuchâtel, as well as, well as Geneva, applied women's right to vote at the cantonal level. However, however, many others held out of the cantonal vote until after the 1971 federal referendum. Therefore, when Elizabeth Blonsky became one of the first women to be elected as an MP in 1971, she was still unable to vote on cantonal matters in her canton of residence. 1971 marked the second and final attempt for women's suffrage. Switzerland finally granted women the right to vote at a national level. This right came decades after most of the Western world. Why? To put it simply, the democracy of the vote in Switzerland meant that men did not want women to have the choice to vote. One of the key figures in the fight for women's vote was the activist Marth Gostelli. Ruth Dreyfus became the first female president of Switzerland in 1999 under the rules of the country's annually rotating presidency. There have since been four others. Women's suffrage was just the beginning, however. Women's access to health care was restricted. In fact, more than one quarter of women in Switzerland reported spending $2,000 or more out of pocket on medical costs for themselves and their family compared to 5% or less in a majority of other countries. Women in Switzerland also report the lowest rates of having a regular doctor or place of care. On top of this, health insurance costs for families in Switzerland were also higher than that of males at the same age. Healthcare also leads to reprodu reproductive rights. In 2002, abortion on request became legal during the first 12 weeks of pregnancy. In the same year, the morning after pill was released for sale without prescription. After the first trimester, abortions are allowed for health reasons without the need for a second medical opinion. On top of this, Switzerland supports this low rate of teenage pregnancy by allowing girls under the age of 16 the right to go ahead with the procedure without the knowledge of their parents. In 1995, the last principle of male supremacy was eliminated with a narrowly approved government-sponsored law that gave women equal rights in a marriage. This meant that women were not prevented from working. They could own property and manage their money. This led to paid maternity leave being introduced in 2005. Although lower than many European countries, mothers are now entitled to 14 weeks of paid maternity leave. This, however, does not make up for the inequalities present in the workplace to this day. In 1981, a law relating to gender equality and equal pay for equal work was put into effect. However, currently, Switzerland has a 19.6% gender, gender pay gap. Many good practices were started against this, including Salarium, a wages calculator available to the general public. This application allows users to obtain and compare information about salary from a specific job. This allows many to compare and negotiate fair pay. Women are still discriminated against due to the idea that married females should not work full-time. Although the law, require, the law no longer requires the husband's consent for his wife works, job interviewers often ask women for it especially when they want to start their own business. It wasn't until the 1980s that schools ended compulsory gendered classes with home economics and handicrafts for girls and workshop for boys. However, 1867 marked the formal opening of Zurich University to women. In 1889, the first Swiss woman, Hedwig Wimmer Zimmerli, completed her studies in medicine at the University of Bern, graduating with a PhD. Finally, violence against women was and is still an issue to this day. However, with its ratification in 2017, Treaty, Treaty No. 210 was introduced by the Council of the Europe Convention on preventing violence against women. In 1992, marital rape was made illegal and effective. 2004, it was made prosecutable ex officio, which means that it can be prosecuted even if the wife does not complain. Barriers present to women in the justice system are questions and stereotypes, including the idea that women are too emotional and exaggerate too much. Through this, many cantons raise awareness on domestic violence and continue to fight gender stereotypes. There is an abundance of knowledge to be gained about women in Switzerland, but for now, that is all the time we have. Thanks for watching.